now I found you in the light Lift it high, I feel alright Praise your name with all my might Found my faith again tonight Hey y'all, welcome to my very first podcast. I'm Mark Espinoza. Today, uh, you're going to be uh, with me for the first episode. It's called the Finding Grace Podcast. And today we're going to talk about forgiveness. We're going to do a deep dive into one of the most powerful and challenging topics in Christian life, and that is forgiveness. Uh, forgiveness is central to our faith and essential to our relationship with God and with others. We live in a world where hurt is almost inevitable. People may fail us wound us and betray us, sometimes unintentionally and sometimes with full intent. When these things happen, our natural inclination might be to harbor resentment and seek retribution. Yet God calls us to a different path, a path that requires courage, humility, excuse me, humility and grace. God calls us to forgive. I'd like to today, I'd like to explore four aspects of forgiveness today. Uh, The number one is why forgiveness is the command from God. Number two, how forgiveness brings us freedom. And number three, the steps to actually forgive. And of course, the last one, the peace that comes when we live a life of forgiveness. So the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, forgiveness is a command from God. And we're going to begin with uh, Matthew 6, 14 to 15. I'll give you a second to try to pull that up. And this is where Jesus teaches in his sermon uh, on the mountain. And he says, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. The verse is one of the strongest statements in Scripture about forgiveness. Jesus tells us that our forgiveness from God is tied to our forgiveness of others. Forgiveness isn't just a suggestion or something to think about when we feel like it. uh, It's a command that reflects God's own nature. By forgiving, we uh, imitate the heart of God himself. So let's think of Ephesians 4.32, and this is where Paul writes, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. In this scripture, Paul connects forgiveness with the kindness and compassions we're called to show as Christians. God's forgiveness towards us isn't conditional. It's freely given through Jesus Christ, and we're called to show that same spirit of grace towards others. But why does God make forgiveness so important? Because forgiveness is about healing and restoration, not only for the offender, but also for the one who was wronged. Holding on to unforgiveness, even if we think we're justified, it prevents us from experiencing the full freedom of joy that God desires for us. Second thing on my list there was forgiveness brings freedom. Forgiveness is not only for the person who wronged us, it's also for us. When we hold on to anger, resentment, or bitterness, we chain ourselves to the hurt. Over time, this bitterness can consume our thoughts, our emotions, and even our physical health, y'all. God wants us to be free, and part of that freedom is found in forgiving others. So the writer of Hebrews 12.15 warns, See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God, and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Bitterness is like a root. If we let it grow, it spreads and infects every part of our lives often spilling over into our relationships, our mental health, and even our relationship with God. In Colossians 3.13, Paul writes, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Notice that Paul doesn't say forgive if you feel like it. He says to forgive as the Lord forgave us. Just as God's forgiveness is complete and constant, our forgiveness should aim to release any remaining bitterness, allowing us to live with true peace and freedom. Third thing on my list, forgiveness brings healing and reconciliation. Forgiveness doesn't erase the past, but it does open the door for healing, and in some cases, reconciliation. Think of the story of Joseph in Genesis. His brothers sold him into slavery, and he endured years of hardship because of their betrayal. But when Joseph finally met them again, he chose to forgive. Genesis 50, 20 captures his response, y'all. Check it out. It says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Joseph understood that God had a bigger plan. He saw how his trials, through painful, though painful, were used by God to bring about a greater purpose because he forgave. Joseph was able to restore his family. He had chosen bitterness. The outcome could have been entirely different. 
In our lives, we may not always see God's plan right away, but when we forgive, we open the door for God to work in us and through us. Forgiveness allows us to let go of the need of retribution and trust that God, who is just who is just and wise, will handle every situation. Let's also remember the parable of prodigal project. Ugh, I can't even talk today, y'all. Let's remember the parable of the prodigal son in Luke 15, 11 through 32. In this story, a son wastes his father's wealth and disgraces his family. Yet when he returns, the father runs to meet him with open arms and forgives him before the son can even speak. This is a picture of God's forgiveness towards us. No matter how far we may have wandered, God welcomes us back with grace and mercy. When we forgive others, we embody the same grace. The fourth thing on my list is how do we forgive? Knowing that we're called to forgive is one thing. Actually doing it, especially when the hurt is deep, is another. Here are some scriptural, scriptural steps that can help us move forward in forgiveness. Pray for the person that hurt you. This can feel impossible at first, but Matthew 5.44 instructs us to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Prayer softens our hearts and aligns us with God's love. It opens the door for the Holy Spirit to work in us even when we don't feel like forgiving. Release your right to hold on to anger. In Romans 12, 19, Paul reminds us, Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, It is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. When we forgive, we place justice in God's hands, trusting Him to deal with the situation fairly. Repeat the process if needed. Forgiveness often isn't one-time event. Jesus taught His disciples in Matthew 18, 21-22, one of my favorite verse to forgive 77 times. Emphasizing that forgiveness is a continual process. If the pain resurfaces, bring it back to God in prayer. Forgiveness is often a journey, not a destination. Number five, the result of forgiveness, peace and joy in Christ. When we forgive, we make room in our hearts for God's peace and joy. Unforgiveness keeps us tied to past hurts, but forgiveness sets us free to live in the present and enjoy the fullness of life that God desires for us. Jesus demonstrated the ultimate act of forgiveness on the cross. In Luke 23, 20, excuse me, 23, 34, he said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Even as he endured unimaginable pain, he chose forgiveness. His act of forgiveness paved the way for our salvation and gave us access to eternal life with God. When we forgive others, we share in his divine work of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5, 18-19 tells us that we have been given the ministry of reconciliation through Christ. Forgiveness allows us to reflect the grace and mercy that God shows each of us, becoming vessels of his love in a world that desperately needs it. I don't know about you, y'all, but I needed that uh, little bit of forgiveness uh, today. Um uh, this is my first podcast, so, you know, I kind of, I wrote out a lot of it, so uh, forgive me um, for not just going off the top of the dome. Um, I, I'm trying to change my life and, and walk with Christ here, and sometimes you got to write it down. I'm not good with memorizing stuff, so I'm going to go ahead and close out in, uh, in prayer, y'all. If y'all can bow your heads with me, wherever you're at, if you're listening, it goes like this. Dear Lord, we thank you for your boundless love and forgiveness towards us. Help us to extend the same love and grace to others. We confess that forgiveness is hard, and sometimes our hearts hold on to hurt and anger, but we trust in you, Lord. Knowing that you give us the strength to forgive, heal our hearts, remove any bitterness, and fill us with your peace, Lord. Let us be reflections of your love in a world that is so deeply needs it. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Now, this has been the Finding Grace podcast, episode one. If y'all check this out, let me know in the comments what you guys want to uh, want me to talk about next. Uh, give me some feedback on what I need to do to fix it. Obviously, uh, not uh, read my uh, memo that I had uh, done and typed out ready for today. But I love y'all. Peace out and God bless. Working cold. Lost my faith, my heart felt oh so old